What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back on our video. This one will be about seven signs you're on the right path with God. Sometimes we need some type of confirmation, and I hope this video can help you guys out with your walk with God. So number one, the first sign is that you are willing to drop old habits, and which is sacrifice, which equals being obedient. Okay, this is the key. You are willing to drop old habits, you know, habits that are keeping you in your flesh, habits that are keeping you in sin. You are willing to sacrifice. You are willing to be obedient uh, to please God, to follow the Most High. So this is what the Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. It says, but the hour come and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such, such to worship him. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So when you're worshiping the father in spirit and truth, you're going to be giving up these old habits. Now, of course, it's going to be a battle because your flesh is raging war against your spirit and your spirit is raging war against your flesh. I'll leave that verse somewhere on the screen in Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, 16, 18, somewhere on there. So you got to understand that, yes, you're going to battle. Yes, you're going to fall short time to time, but you are willing to give up everything to follow Christ, to, you know, to cling on to God and what he has plans in your life. So always keep that in mind. That's an obvious sign, a clear sign as day is that you're willing to drop old habits. You're willing to sacrifice to be obedient. OK, that's how, you know, even Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So you're being obedient. And you're doing whatever you can, whatever it takes. You're not making excuses. You're not justifying uh, sin. You are doing whatever it takes to please the Father because you love God so much. And you not, you not only do you love him with your words, but you love him with your deeds, your actions. All right, so number two is, well, this is a good one, guys. You are watchful of the company you keep. All right, you are very watchful of the company you keep because the Bible says that evil communications corrupt good manners. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it even says, blessed is the man who keep not the counsel of the ungodly. Okay, so we know that the certain, certain people that are around you, they could influence you to do things that go against your, your integrity, to go against your character. You know, there's a saying that you are the five people you surround yourself with. So you're very watchful. You're conscious of your surroundings and you're not so quick to uh, give your spirit, to give your heart to an individual because you know that you got to protect your energy because you know that there's a spiritual warfare taking place and the devil is using certain people. When the devil sees you on the right path, Oh, he's going to use people. He's going to use people to try to get you to go back to your old ways, to get you to go back to your old vomit. So be wise, inherit wisdom, walk in wisdom, because we know that time is evil. Satan is always going to use someone in your old past, someone that you had those old, used to do those old habits with, uh, whatever the case may be. He's going to use them to try to get you to go back to your old habits, because the devil does not want you to be on the right path, because the right path is the narrow path, the straight and narrow, which leads to salvation which leads to everlasting life. The devil doesn't want you to go there. He wants you to go where he's going, the lake of fire, hell. He wants you to go where he's going. So always keep that in the back of your mind. You're on the right path. You're watchful of your company. You're not so quick to be friends with certain people because you know you got to protect your energy. You can't be so quick to be attached to certain individuals. All right, number three is that you have the fear of God in you. Okay, this is very important. This is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 26 to 27. It says, and the fear of the Lord is a strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. A refuge, chapter 27, or verse 27 says, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Okay, what is the fear of the Lord? You'll think twice before you go and willfully sin. You'll think twice before you be disobedient because you have the fear of God in you. You respect God and you fear him to a point where you know that the fear now people might seem like having the fear of God in you is bondage, but no, it's a blessing because it just says that it's a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. A lot of people, guys, they escape death by having the fear of God in them. They took heed to the warnings. Okay, they know God's word, so they know that being around certain individuals, being around certain people, uh, could be the death of them. You know, just like I said, you know, you're you're conscious of the company you keep. So when you have the fear of God in you, you're gonna move different. You're not going to move like everybody else because you're on that straight and narrow path. And you realize the more, the longer you're on that path, you're going to realize that most people are on that other side, the other side of history, that broad, wide gate, which leads to destruction. So you're, you're being obedient. You're sacrificing. You're watching the company you keep and having the fear of God in you is preserving your soul. It's protecting you spiritually. Even the Bible says that who, he who has a fear of God in him have, has angels around him to protect him. Okay, I'll leave that verse on the screen. He who has who he has a fear of God has angels. So when you have the fear of God and you are protected, not only physically, but also spiritually, when you leave your house, best believe there's angels protecting you that we can't see. 
Okay, now sometimes the Bible does say, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for we, some have entertained angels unaware. Okay, so even then, even the strangers that we entertain that are actually angels, we still don't, you know, sometimes we don't even know. So when you leave your house, uh, you might get hit by a car. Something bad might happen, but there's angels that are protecting you because like I said, the devil doesn't want you to be on that right path. He's going to try to do his best he could do to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Okay, but those angels, the heavenly angels, they are protecting you. All right, and if you guys are getting edified, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Next one up is the Holy Spirit gives you conviction, okay? So let's say if you're stirring off the path that God has placed you on, which it happens to all of us. We fall short, like I said earlier, so we make mistakes and we're trying to be perfect. We're trying, we're striving for perfection. We're striving to do whatever we can to please God. Even though we fall short, even though we make mistakes, it doesn't matter. We don't make excuses. We are trying our best to be perfect because the Bible says that to be perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect, okay? So the Holy Spirit is convicting you of your error, of your sins. Uh, maybe you might be falling into disobedience. You might be falling into your, um, you know, uh, a pit, a pit of sin. So the Holy Spirit gives you conviction. And this is a good verse for us to meditate on. This is in the Romans chapter eight, verse 14. It says, for as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay. So when you're being led by the Holy Spirit, you are a son of God. God is leading you. He's, he's directing your path. Now you must be obedient to take heed you must be obedient to you know be watchful you know that's why the bible says to be sober and be watchful for the enemy seeks someone to devour so you are being aware of your surroundings and you're understanding the spiritual warfare that's taking place so you have put on the full armor of god every time you leave your house because you know that there's a war going on for your soul and the devil does not want you to reach salvation but even this you, you know that there's angels protecting you everywhere you go Okay. And I wanted to say a verse for the fear of God one. This is in Luke chapter one, verse 50. It says, and mercy and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. So you're going to have, God's going to give you mercy when you fear God. When you fall into sin, when you make, make a mistake, whatever the case might be, he's going to have mercy on you because he saw that even then you for months and years, you were fighting a good fight. And, you know, something might have happened down along. Who knows? Okay. We, life throws random stones at our life. You know, random things have, pop up in our life things that we can't control, maybe like a death in our family, um, you know, things like that, okay, you know, things that we can't control. And let's say, you, you know, because of that, you might go through hard, 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 hardships, you know, heartbreaks, you know, you know, sorrow of your spirit. And that's where the mercy comes in hand. But we don't abuse the spirit of grace, okay? We don't, we don't, we don't just say, oh, you know, we're saved by grace, so we could just sin, sin, sin. No, when we have the fear of God in you, God gives you extra mercy, extra mercy. So I want to say that. Next one up, well, this is a good one, is you become a doer of the word of God and not just a hearer, okay? So when you're reading the Bible, you're not just reading it to waste time. You're actually reading it to get edified. You're just like when a baby, right? When a baby is in the newborn stage, it needs milk to grow. The Bible is the milk. So you, you need the word of God to grow and you got to apply it to your life because the Bible says this in 1 James, in James chapter 1, verse 22, to 24 it says that be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass for he behold himself and go his way and straightforward forgot what manner of a man he was verse 25 but whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word this man shall be blessed in his deed okay so it says the man who who, who reads the Bible, right, but doesn't apply it to his life, he forgets who he was. He forgets the man he is. But the man who um, studies to show himself approved, applies the word of God to his life. He's not just a hearer, but a doer. And it says that this man shall be blessed in his deed. Okay, so when you apply the word of God to your life, that's protection. Okay, the word of God is our protection. So you are, that's what goes in hands with all everything I've been saying. So you are a doer of the word of God and not just a hearer, okay? You are applying it to your life because that's how you grow. That's how you transform. That's how you level up the word of God. You know, a lot of people, they talk about leveling up, but more in a, like a carnal way. But you want to be leveling up spiritually, you know, and how you level up spiritually, the, the closer you get to God, having the Holy Spirit grow in you. All right. Number six is your faith in God and Christ produces fruits. Okay. We all know what the Bible says. Faith without works is dead. And this is in John chapter 15, verse four to eight. So this is Christ speaking. He says, abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit 
of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Okay, so Christ is saying that the only way you could bear fruit and produce fruit is having Christ in you. Okay, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For you cannot do nothing, without me, you cannot do nothing. So without Christ, we cannot do nothing. And when you have Christ in you, you're going to produce much fruit. You're going to be very fruitful. Okay, verse six says, if a man not, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And man gather them and cast them into fire and they are burned. Ooh. Verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall, not, and it shall be done to you. Okay, And it says that the Father is glorified in his name because you abide in Christ. So that's what we need to have to be on the right path is having the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in your life. Jesus is Lord. That's what that's the main thing is for you to be fruitful. Okay, It's for you to be fruitful in all that you do. Okay, So you have your faith in God and Christ, and that's going to produce fruits. Remember, the Bible says that if you don't have Christ in you, man come and, and burn it with the branches okay so just like how we have it in life when the, the brand in the most time the branches they use it for to go bonfire it gets burned okay so but when you're fruitful you're producing fruit in that tree so that's what that means number seven is you are no longer in love with the world this is so important okay you are no longer in love with the world let's see what the bible says about that it says in one john chapter 2 verse 15 to 17 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world pass away and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. Okay, so loving the world is a spiritual death sentence. Okay, yes, I said that loving this world is a spiritual death sentence. This world is passing away. The only thing that abides in this world, okay, says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's not of God, but it's of the world. So when you are losing your interest in the world, in John chapter 3, verse 30, when he is increasing, when Christ is increasing in you, and you are decreasing in yourself, that is a clear sign that you are on the right path. That is a clear sign that you're giving up the vanity, you're giving up the pride, you're giving up the lust, you're giving up the deadly sins, and you're now Christ in you is increasing more and more. Okay, you're giving up the material things and, and the vanity, the illusion, the matrix. You're giving up all that. And you're now increasing spiritually with Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Okay, You are no longer in love with this world. You don't care no more. You don't care because you know that this world is just passing away. And we know that Christ is coming back real soon to give every man according to his work. So we must be seeking the kingdom of God daily and his righteousness because we know that all things will be added to us and we'll be prepared in times to come. You know, no, no need to operate in fear and fear. No, long, no need to be scared. None of that. So I hope you guys got edified from this video. This is seven signs you are on the right path of God. Number one is you are willing to drop old habits. Number two, you are watchful of the company you keep. Number three, you have the fear of God in you. Number four, the Holy Spirit gives you conviction. Number five is you become a doer and not a, uh, a doer of the word of God and not just a hearer. Number six is your faith in God and Christ produces fruit. And number seven is you are no longer in love with this world. So I hope you guys got enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you guys wish to share this video on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace. God bless.